Now I want to go through the history on how this truth started. 1800, literate blacksmith named Gabriel Prosser taught the slaves through inspiration of the Bible that we were God's people and should rebel against the tyranny of America. So that drawing right there is an illustration of Gabriel Prosser. That was in the 1800s. Then you had 1831. It says a slave named Nat Turner was called the prophet. A lot of people don't know that. That was his nickname, the prophet, because he was always talking about the scriptures. Okay, and raised a small slave rebellion based on Bible teachings and visions of war and blood he had. Many blacks today demonized this man who attempted to save them from oppression. Then you had in 1896, William Saunders Crowdy in Lawrence, Kansas. He established the Church of God and Saints of Christ. Although he taught blacks were God's people, he mixed a lot of Christianity in his teaching. You could Google this guy, and it tells you that it was still a lot of Christian stuff in there. Okay, under it, it says, F.S. Cherry set up the Church of the Living God, the pillar ground of truth for all nations. So even with this, he had all nations involved in this. This group was founded in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and later moved to Philadelphia. Theologically, the Church of the Living God mixed elements of Judaism and Christianity and the town moved. So he had all races in there, so that he was still kind of off too. 1920, you have Ma uh, Wentworth uh, A. Matthews. He established the Commandment Keepers in Harlem, New York. He primarily based his learnings on so-called Jewish people. He rejected all New Testament writings. That was him right there. 1929. You have Israel Ben Newman and Mordecai Herman. They established the Moorish Zionist Temple of the Moorish Jews. They also followed white Jewish teachings, okay? Under that, you're in 1930, you had Arnold Josiah Ford. He and a small group of black Jews went to Ethiopia where they participated in the coronation of Emperor Haile Selassie, created a school and acquired 800 acres of land for the purpose of uniting black Jews and the diaspora with Ethiopians. He died there in 1935. So he also, he had a little bit of understanding, but not to the point of where we're about to get to. Okay, near the end of the civil rights movement, there were several prominent Israelite teachers. It was around this time the truth was being taught on a larger scale in, and in more areas. 1960, this is where we branch off from, right here. 1960, you had Eber Ben, ben Yemyan, also known as Abba Bivens. He was initially taught he was an Israelite by an ex-slave some many, many years early in the South. Bivens believed in the black Christ and on his way to New York, he had visited many Indian reservations and came to the scriptural conclusion that the so-called Indians were Israelites as well. He then came to New York and joined the commandment keepers. That's the group we saw up above with Matthews, uh, under Matthew, but rejected Matthew's teachings of Old Testament only. So they got into an argument and Bivens broke off from him. Uh, Bivens founded the Israeli school. He was the first to teach both the blacks and Indians of the Americas uh, Israelites. So he was the first one that started to teach about the two kingdoms. 1963, you got Ben Carter, also known as Ben Ami. Uh, he led 300 Israelites from Chicago to Liberia and then to Demona, Israel. He established the African Hebrew Israelites. He attempted to deliver his group from the curses of Deuteronomy 28 under the oppressive hand of America, but soon discovered that oppression followed him to Demona, Israel. Due to lack of citizenship, they lacked the medical and dental capabilities to properly take care of one another. So he agreed to support the Jewish Israeli military, allowing their young men to fight against the Palestinians in exchange for much needed supplies for their camp. He had to sell a soul just to get a little thing, a few um, uh, dental, benefits. dental benefits and medical benefits to help his people. He got a son of young men in their war. 1965, William A. Lewis taught a congregation in Grand Junction, Michigan. 1970, Hulan Mitchell Jr. This is the one they have on the biography channel. Where many of your, your mothers and fathers will Google Israelites. This guy pops up first. He, this dude was a murderer. It says 1970, Hulan Mitchell Jr a.k.a. Yahweh ben Yahweh, established the nation of Yahweh, proclaimed himself God, the Son of God. Sound familiar that somebody's doing today? He and many of his followers were arrested for murder, racketeering, arson, and many other crimes to establish themselves in various states. He was found guilty of these crimes in 1991 and died of colon cancer in prison. Next, 1973, you had Moshe ben Karim, a.k.a. also known as Masha. 
He uh, was chosen to carry on to teaching in Abba Bivens' place. Bivens had died, okay? He was fighting with the Muslims on the street because you had two groups that was teaching on the streets at this time. You had the Muslims, that's why if you look at the movie Malcolm X, remember you see Malcolm on a ladder teaching? And you got, uh, you had Sharpton playing a preacher. Bobby, Bobby Seale. And Bobby Seale. Right. right. So during that time, you also had, Bivens was on the street teaching. They used to get into confrontations about the scriptures. And Bivens didn't play. He'd fight you quick. So the Muslims had given him, beat him down real, real bad and put him in a hospital. In the hospital, he had set up Mashat and um, Yaikov to take over the teachings of the school. And Bivens had passed away. So I'm going to read this right here. 1973, Moshe ben Karim, a.k.a. Mashal, was chosen to carry on teaching in Abba Bivens' place where Peter Sherrod, also known as Yaikwab, that's Yaikwab on the right, Mashal is in the green. It says they took over the Israeli school adding UPK, Universal Practical Knowledge. Later in the 70s, they were helped by five other brothers and they were called the Seven. They were offered, now this is the key point, they were offered several million dollars by the Rosicrucians to teach a more Christian or Jewish message of unity for all mankind, as some of the other Israelite camps teach. Masha and Yankov refused because they had given them. They, yeah, y'all, we, y'all we were when they were doing this. They had handed them a, bl a blank check and said, "Just write in whatever number you want, and it's yours." They said no and gave it back to them. It says a Christian Jewish message means Negroes will remain on the bottom of society and the full truth will never be taught. So now that's we want to pause right there at that history there. And I want to go to the photos. Go to the photos now. Okay, this is on 125th Street. This is the address. 1 West 125th Street. The top floor is where Masha Yaikopnam had the school at. Okay, this is from, they had it from the 70s, from this time. Right, that was the room, room 211. That's when the, we had came in, okay? It was room 211 on the second floor. That right there leads up to those doors, the 211. Right. That's the store. Those are the, the infamous stairs that we talk about. Right. Right. We, we used to tell you our stories. If you got on that, if you went in there and tried to rebel against the, the elders, there were seven of them, run your mouth, they would throw you down these stairs. You was going down head first. Right. And yeah. they, they were serious. Dead serious. It got to a point where they didn't have to jump over the table. They said, brothers, throw that nigga out right there. You have big, five big black brothers. Pick your behind up and throw you down those stairs. You hear, boom, 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 this, this one here, that's Lahab. That's Lahab, right. Okay, the next one is Masha. Right, he was the head of the school, Masha. I can't see what that is. That that's Ariana behind That's Ariana behind on the back? Right you do have Kazakh. Yeah, He's way in the back. Right. Well, you can barely see him, but that's Kazakh. Is that Shadia? Right, no, 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 no. listen. No. See, what, right. see, see what Larry Al is with the, with the white turban on? Go back, right. Now, right, right next to him, right there. Right there. That's Kazakh. Okay. The right. next that's one, Kazakh. that's Kazakh. And the next one? That's Yeshaya. That's Yeshaya. The next one is Yaikwab. That's Ariel's father. Right. That's Ariel's father. And the next one on the far right is Shaw. Yeah. No. That's the Shaw right there. Right there. That's the seven. That's the seven that taught all these different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the seven leaders that taught all these Israelites that you see out here. The bulk of them come from the understanding that these men set up. So don't let nobody. You got brother talking about, oh, I taught Nathaniel. You know. These was these, our these teachers the right there, us. the ones we named. That's it. When Don't I, let nobody gas you up in your ear. No, I, I told, no, they didn't. Yes. No, the ones that died is Yaikwab and Masha. Yaikwab died the night of the split, and Masha died sometime later. Okay, so those are the seven elders that taught us through, and Bivens taught them. Okay, actually, let me go back to Yaikwab for a second, because Bivens did not drop the understanding to Yaikwab. Yaikwab was in the Midwest and he was in a bar and he said a black man, he said back then, he said they all had six shooters on, on their hips back in the West because if you ever met him, he, they were dressed like cowboys. Yeah. He said a dude walked in and he said he was at the bar and the brother said, he said the brother's afro went right into his beard 
And he said it was perfect. He said not one strand of hair was out of place. And he said the brother said, hey, you see all these black people in this bar right here? And Yaakov goes, yeah. He says, all of them in here is Israelites. He said, Israelites? He says, Israelites. And Yaakov said he started looking around. He said the brother walked up and walked out the bar. Yaakov said he ran behind him to ask him more questions. And he said he never saw the guy again. He couldn't, he didn't know if he went to the left or right. He was looking, he didn't see him. So he said he thinks that it was an angel. That was his thought to us. He said, I can't prove it, but that was my thought. So then when he came up this way, that's when he met Bivens. And Bivens expounded more of the understanding to him. Ariel's the one in the red. You got Masha with the, the black leather hat. With the black. Black with the, the teeth on it. All right, that's Masha. On the far right is Shaw. Yes. Now on the far left, go to the far left, that's Ramila. He's the one that taught Deacon Asaph initially. Go to the far left. The brother right, right, there. right there. Right there. Right there. Right Asaph? Yep. That's the brother that taught Asaph right there. I'm going to show y'all something. Right here. Y'all see this young man right here with the blue? This man right here with the blue, that's who y'all call the God sent comforter. Who says that um, an angel came from heaven and taught him the scriptures. No, that's not true. That's Tazadakia. He was in a school with us. He came in when he was about 15 years old. Learning the scriptures with the rest of us. We were already in our what? 20s. Yeah. He came in like he was about, no, he's younger than them. He's about 10 years younger than us now I think about it. Because the article said that he's 37 today. Which means he's about, a, it was a good 10 year difference. Okay, so this is who many of the brothers and sisters are calling the God sent comforter of today. Now when we knew him, he was a good brother. He was decent. He used to help y'all stop, read for him on the videos and all that. Okay, where this stuff came in today, remember the same thing about we read about the Rosha Crucius with the blank checks, offering money? When we when the split happened, all that's what occurred, what you see today. I'm gonna go to this one. This is Kazak. He was the historian in the school. He brought out all the history. The the history throughout the uh, Middle Ages and all kind of good stuff. Okay? That's the that's yeah, go, ahead, come on. You know that welcome home package that we have? You know where that phrase came from? Welcome home, because me and the elder talked about it. The night that I came into the school for the first time, this brother was teaching. And when I walked into the school, he asked, he asked, he asked me how did I come to the truth, and I said, well, I was learning from the brothers down the street. And I said that I couldn't, I couldn't debunk anything that they were saying, because everything that they were reading out of the Bible, I was agreeing with it. So I asked them where was the school, and they told me that the school was here. So when I walked into his class, it was on a Wednesday, because that's when he taught. He taught the Wednesday's class history. And when I walked in, he asked me all these questions, and I said, this is where I was supposed to be. And he looked at me, and he said, welcome home. Oh, praise that's what he told me. He said, welcome home. And that was it. That was it. So that's the reason. When we discussed it, that's the reason why that pamphlet, that uh, book says that. Exactly. Right. Now, in the school, we had what's called the trooper program. We had the military going on. All that y'all see us doing today goes back to what we had seen the, the, the elders had set up way back. We used to go out and uh, jog, do push it, all that. We had to be in good shape for health reasons. You had a lot of overweight brothers. So we used to go out every Sunday morning early, 6 a.m. We would get up and march and all that. You, you was there. Yeah, I was there. Mm -hmm. we, we used to live on a, well, all of this happened around the time when we had an issue with the drug dealers that was running those buildings on 126th Street. So what you see here is that this right here was a time period when we had to get those drug dealers out of there. We had the respect of the community in that area. Drug dealers did not mess with us. They didn't mess with our women, nothing. We try to come back to those days again. In the school, you had this brother, Aharon. He was one of the, uh, he was a... What was his rank? Captain of... He was, he was a captain. Or was he a general? I can't remember. He, he was a general. They made it up to general, like five shields. The whole lot of them was like five shield general. Exactly. So he he died a couple of years ago, Aharon. He died. This young man right here is Brother Zaquan. He's the one that uh, initially was in contact with Brother Yan and sent Yan this way. So when, Jan met, when we met Yan at the age of 16, it was because this brother right here was teaching him and sent him this way. Okay, so now I'm gonna go out of that. Go back. Let me go to Yashua's brother. Yeah, that was Yashua's brother. Okay, these two brothers right here. These were two other um, high up ranking brothers in the school. This brother right here, Banyamyan. 
Y'all see him on the videos with me doing the 12 track breakdown. They're still in the truth under the uh, house of David. This is our brother Barack right here. Okay, I'm just going through it so y'all be familiar with him so y'all know exactly who's who. And guess what? They're, they're not demons. They will salute you and shalom you, you know? This right here. Y'all know this brother. This is uh, General Yohanna. He was back then in the school with us, okay? He was uh, one of the top generals. He was always um, very, he was very initiative, I'll put that out. He was always about setting up new camps and new things. He had a TV show right. Black Watch. called Black Watch. That was one of the top TV shows back in the day. Okay, so he gotta get his props too. I ain't gonna knock, I ain't gonna knock none of the brothers. Um, who else was there? Let me go down. Y'all know this brother right here. I couldn't find him, so I couldn't find a better picture. That's, that's Tahar. Brothers always want to know how does Tahar fit into this. Tahar was the camp leader of the 44th Street camp. So when Yarosop, myself, came and many other brothers, he was already a general. He was set up as the camp leader. Like today, you have Deacon Malachi as a camp leader, Ithan's a camp leader, um, Laba's a camp leader, Yarosop is a camp leader. So when we came in, he was the camp leader on 44th Street and Broadway. And Harlem, because that was when I came in. Right, and in Harlem, exactly. Okay, and he used to set, he set up a school in Connecticut. What y'all see today, he was nothing like that when we went to school. These, you got new things coming out from the brother today, but I'm praying the Most High will bring him back to his proper mind. Right. Also, y'all know this brother here, Zabak. He was in a school with us, also. Okay, he was a young brother, and behind him you have um, um, Maharaka. Maharaka. They were both in the school with us. All right, so y'all see them on YouTube also. On YouTube, y'all see uh, the 14th Street Israelites. That's uh, the big brother's brother, uh, Bakwash, and the smaller brother is Lamad. They were also in the school with us back in the day. So what happened, you may ask, well, what happened? What happened to cause all this separation? The spirit of Negrodom set in. Many of us get disgruntled. because the main thing that makes Negroes mad? Money. Money money. Um, the brother here, who was the uh, General Lahab, he's the one that set up uniformity in the school. He set up order. Now, let me explain to you. Arya, this brother here, he was the, one of the main ones that taught us the scriptures. Yeshaya and Kazak were the historians of all of them. And Lahab was the one that set up order in the school. Because what started to happen was you had some brothers who were poorer than others, okay? So you had older brothers who knew more, didn't have as much money as the young brothers that were coming in. Young brothers were coming with these astronomical garments. And if you would look at them, you would think these were the elders. It's, whoa, this guy. And it'd be like, so Lahab was the one that said, but well, this is out of order. There needs to be order amongst the ranks with the brothers so you know who's who. So Lahab was the one, this was just before that was set up, but he was the one that set up Central Command, okay? And you had many of the, like back there, you see a brother, he's a Gadite, Ariala. Mm -hmm. Then you got, that's Yohanna, back there. Uh, that's, in the back, that's Lawyer, I see his face, that's Lawyer. Those were the generals under Lahab that had set up Central Command, and what they did, they took over a building. The building was magnanimous, beautiful. 77 West 125th Street. But there was a problem. They didn't sign no papers for that building. They took it over gangster. <laughs> so the so-called Jews got the, uh, the, uh, um, the, they came in and said, listen, y'all did a wonderful job in our building. Thank you. We are, we are taking it over. So that's what, one of the things that happened, there was a, um, a coup against Masha. There was one Passover, there was, a, there was going to be a hit put out on Masha. You have many of the brothers in the back that denied they were involved in it. I was, we were in the council, so we know exactly what was going on. But what happened was what Masha did, because everybody denied it. No, we wasn't trying to overthrow you, wasn't trying to overthrow you. What Masha did was raise up a lot of the young men uh, in their ranks to counter the ranks of the higher generals. So that's when Yawasap got, they set you up as captain of 10,000. They made me a general. Uh, Tahar was already a general. Tahar was not involved. I'll tell you, Tahar was not involved in any coup, okay, that was going on. So I'll just put that out now. 
Okay, he was in his right mind. Um, let me go out of this. I'm going through this so there's no confusions about what happened. So there was a split. Masha set up the house of David. Where is it at? Bear with me. There's a little dark picture somewhere. Right there. Okay. Masha had left after this coup. He had set up the house of David. Uh, you see Barak right there. This is the brother we just showed you and other from the house of David. Uh, that's Yahweh uh, What's his name? Sh Shikai. Um, there was a council set up. Right, Yahashua's right there. There was a council set up. Masha set up a council. I think it was about 15 brothers. Now this is what happened next. Things started to go on, years went on, and Tahar brought in the doctrine of, number one, he initiated Cornelius was an Israelite. That was Tahar. He brought that up. At the same time, he brought up that we could rape children. He also brought up that, um, what did he say? Rape, rape girls according to Deuteronomy 22, which we didn't agree with. There was a whole f argument at this time, and the, the senior brothers, because the senior brothers is who the ones counsel with my shot and said, listen, Tahar got to go. He got to go. Now, I was screaming. I was mad as hell at night. I'll tell you the truth. I, was, I couldn't believe the stuff I was hearing. And it was Yaasha. Let me go out so I get a clear picture of Yaasha. You see one of Yaasha? I'm going to tell you what he said in the council. Okay, right here. This brother right here, that's Yaasha. Rahab was there. They were the ones that said, listen, you were, before he, they said get out, they told, my, they told Taha, he's to come back and counsel with us about what he sees about Cornelius. Taha said, no, I'm not counseling, we're going over it right, right now. So it's an argument because you had a lot of new brothers come in, it was causing confusion. When you go over the scriptures, you don't have new spirits in there with you. You wait and get the senior brothers to uh, go back and forth, precept upon precept, to analyze to see if the scripture was correct. He didn't want to do that. So they told Masha, Taha has to go. So, and that's what happened with Taha. He then set up Great Millstone. Okay, that's the name that y'all see today on YouTube. So now, from there, I don't have a picture of the next brother, but there was another split in the house of David. I'm seeing to where we got to today. There was another split in the house of David and 12 tribes of Israel were set up. That was another school. And it was, let me go back to the picture. It was headed by these two. Rahab, he was the top man with us, and Yaasha. These were the two senior men at 12 tribes of Israel. There was, under them, they set up, they had um, a council, and you had a junior council. The junior council consisted of, see this brother right here? His name is Damama, Northern Kingdom, tribe of Simeon. He's the one that brought out, we don't have to keep the commandments anymore. He's the one that started to bring pork into the school and eat pork and say, we don't have to keep God's laws. That caused a split and that, let me go out now, let me go out. Out of that, you had, I'm just, this is brief. This is when out of that school, you had myself, Barak Shah, and Kanai that came out of that school. Everybody else went back into the world. After that, that's why I listen real good when brothers talk. I, I pick up very well who, who's trying to bring out a doctrine. And my ears are keen on that thing. And that, what happened at that school is not going to happen here. Myself, Barak Shah, and Kanai set up uh, Israel United in Christ. That was in 2003. Now, let me get some of these pictures. Now, during that time, Barak Shah and myself traveled to Jamaica. We did a talk show. It was a live show by this guy here called Ian Bourne. The name of his show was Religious Hard Talk. And that show, I'm trying, that dude never wanted, he thought he was gonna shut us down. Man, we toys behind up in the spirit of the Lord. They had a makeup room. It was a real nice studio they had. There's a makeup room and all that. He refused to give us a copy of the show. Let me go, let me see what else. Let me, let me find out some more. Okay, that's, this is a close up of Yaquab. He died back in 95. Peter Sherrod, that was his name. The night of the split, split Yaquab died. So now, me, Kanai, and Barak Shah had Israel, set up Israel United in Christ. And Kanai, Elder Kanai, went to Florida because he could not, he had about, I think he had seven kids at that time. And he said, there's no place for them to move, live out here. It was too expensive. We moved to Florida. All right? So now, from there, we started the whole class in my house. Okay? And this is when. 
Yawasop came back in the picture again. Uh, this is Aithan right there, if y'all can see him. I had a lot of brothers in and out of my house teaching. So when Yawasop came with Deacon Asaph and uh, Aithan, they thought they were going to shut me down. Because they came with, listen, Cornelius is an Edomite, a heathen. He's not Israel, Romans 11. So we, I let them talk. I said, all right, by this time, the most I opened my mind that I understood by this time, Cornelius was an Israelite, as well did Kenai and Barak Shah. So we, we, we tangled in the scriptures. The Spirit of God won them over, and they are here with us. All praise to the most high. Um, let me get another picture. There's Ithan again. Asaph is on the end. Asaph always sat on the right side of the table over there. That was my little apartment in Coney Island, Brooklyn. There's Asaph, you can see his nose, his forehead, there is me. I thought, I see you. <laughs> there's uh, there's jo uh, Josiah's in this picture. See him back there? That's Officer Josiah. Uh, I think probably Shamar. There's Barack Shah. Brother Paul was one of the first brothers that came in with Deacon Malachi right here is Malachi. There's Asaph, you can see his head right there. There's Yashuan was the first one to start making us garments. Brother Ra Rashuan, I'm sorry, right? Yeah. Rashuan. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, after a while, I started to take them out on the street with me. There's Deacon Malachi. Look how young they are. Yeah, me, Barack, and uh, Yawasat was there. I said, we ain't going to be nervous. Everything going to be okay. Yeah, okay, uh, don't laugh at my manly stance here. I was tired. <laughs> we didn't have garments at this time. We didn't have no garments. Okay, um, okay. So at this time, uh, Laba came from Connecticut with Deacon Shakya. Deacon Laba and Deacon Shakya came over with a group from Connecticut when Rashawan was there with us. Um, and they wanted to get themselves together, and we started to share, share with them the commandments of the Most High. When them laws started to come out, the only ones that remained was Laba and Shaki. The rest of them went right back into foolishness. Okay, um, let me see if I'm missing out on anybody. Um, bear with me a second, look at these pictures. All this what I'm going through is very brief, very brief. Okay, now, after that, at 1088, we set up the school 1088. Uh, Barack Shah, let me get a close-up of Barack Shah so y'all know, I'm going to just tell it to you straight, I ain't going to hurt nobody's feelings. Okay, here's Barack Shah right here. Explain it. We had an elders meeting, and the elders was addressing certain issues in the school at the time concerning the elders' children and their unbelieving spirits. And he started with his son, he started with Gabba, because Gabba was wearing on tight pants. He ain't like that. So he blasted him, and he got on Barack Shah's daughter, Shayla. Because she kept leaving her head covers and her Bibles in the school every week, every weekend. So he said, you got an unbelieving spirit. At that point, he took it off the alarm with the demons, which is his wife. And then after that, she got she caught spirits. And then that's when um, uh, all the controversy began, pretty much. Right. Yeah. She had, there was a woman's class where her and my wife were teaching. That went on for one day, because after that, it was stopped. Barack Shah and his wife were angry about that, that and it was, she wanted to teach the sisters. And we were saying, no, the scriptures say the man is to teach the sisters. So after all of that, she sent out a text message, which we still have on file and stock, in case anybody doubts us, condemning my house, how evil we were, blah, blah, blah. So Barack Shah sent in a resignation letter. Uh, they refused, his wife refused to repent. She never said, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's for all the other lies say she did. That's a lie. She never repented. All right, it was the book of Dan. She had brought out to my wife to teach her the book of Dan. We got on her about that. There were a lot of little things regarding women that Barack Shah could not see that caused the split. So he left us, and he set up a future world of Israel, and he set up his wife to have a teaching uh, thing called Future Women of Israel. That's his wife in the photo right there. And you see the golden chairs around the picture. Okay. Now, this is all on his website. This is not something we're making up. This is not a campaign. Right, this is a throne room. The title is Ask Ariel. Right, Ask Ariel. Right, see in yellow up above it, it says Ask Ariel. This part is called Future Women of Israel. Anything you want to know, you go and ask her. Right. So this is some of the things that we did not agree with. We're 
kind of scriptures that we set our women up in in honor on um, positions like that? With a Tony Montana shot. You know, so this is a, an example of what happened. Listen up, listen up, brother. All right, listen so this up. is so that there's no confusion about what happened. That is how we all learn the scriptures, so there should be no more confusion. Don't tell me you met a, a guy named Bob in Arizona. He said he was your teacher. That's a lie. We showed you who our teachers were. We showed you from Bivens, from the time of the men that came in this truth before us. Everybody we showed on here, yes, we love all the brothers, all the sisters. I want to make that straight. There's no spirit of malice or hatred. And our prayer is that under Christ we all come together. Okay? All of us. That's, that's, that is the prayer. And which is going to happen if we endure until the end.